Hello everybody, today I'm going to tell you about the single stage absorption unit. I have drawn here a counter current single stage absorption unit because the flows this way of the liquid and the gas goes this way. Basically in absorption you have a gaseous mixture like say ammonia mixture with some other gases and you would send in water from the opposite side to actually collect the ammonia from the mixture and then send it outside. So the gas which is coming in, assume it's, ammo it's an ammonia mixture, is G, that's the whole amount of gas, and Gs is the part of that amount which does not react with the liquid which you send in. Y is the mole fraction of this gas, and capital Y is the mole ratio. Now, the liquid which I'm sending in is water and this has a mole fraction x1 the amount of water I'm sending is sending in is L1 and x1 is the mole ratio and LS is within the water there would be an um, uh, a fraction of water which doesn't react at all and that I'm representing with LS the reason why I'm using GS and LS is because it will remain constant throughout the process the amount of LS and GS which will not react will remain constant whereas the reacting pa part or the portion will continue to do its operations. So at the exit we have G1, Y1 and capital Y corresponding to what I told you before and LS, L, X and capital X. Capital X is the mole ratio and L is the mole fraction and L represents the amount of the substance that we are sending in in moles per hour, kg moles per hour. So if you read the note which I've given here, the gas entering is a mixture and the liquid entering is pure. The gas leaving will be pure because of the absorption and the liquid leaving will be a mixture because it will contain the ammonia. So I'm just, in case you are not sure of what I just said, you can just read all these. Now, uh, coming to the theory part, I would really suggest all of you to have this diagram. So I'm just going to draw the diagram for you on this side so that when I really explain the theory, you would remember it. So. I'm just gonna write L1 because that's more important okay now coming to the theory if you look at the mass balance and the diagram which is here yep so if you look at the mass balance the input is l1 and g so the input is l1 can you see that clearly the arrow is inwards and g it's counter current and the output is L and G1 so we are saying that the input will be equal to the output that's your mass balance now coming to the next portion now when you actually calculate any kind of fraction we just take say for example I want to calculate 1 by 4th of 100 so 100 is my total amount and 1 by 4th is my fraction I use the similar principle here this is the total amount and this 1 minus x is the fraction which would be unreacted because x is the fraction which is reacting based on the diagram. If you look at this, L and x. So x is the component which is coming out. That means it's reacting. L, if it was xs, it would be the amount of unreactive. So 1 minus x is actually the amount of unreactive fraction and when I multiply it to the total, like here, we get the amount of unreactive gas. Now the unreactive gas, since it's constant, this equation will also give me the same answer. Similarly, this equation is built on the same concept. Now we go to component balance. Component balance is basically when you consider the moles as well, or the amount of moles. So again, input is equal to output. So I'm just multiplying the fraction with the total. 
and writing the component balance similar to that of the first one so l1 l1 into x1 g g into y basically based on this equation g into y and here it will be l1 into x1 this is the input and the output will be this on writing that we get this equation now i am substituting the values of l1 from this so l1 would be equal to ls by 1 minus x1 on substituting all of these in a similar fashion all the l1s and l's so as to get it in terms of ls i'll get this equation so this is the equation that i'll get so this is a theory that we're supposed to know x1 by 1 minus x1 is equal to x1 which is the mole ratio mole ratio is basically the moles of the component by the moles present in the mixture moles present in the mixture is 1 minus x1 say if x1 and x2 are a mix we know that x1 plus x2 which is a mole fraction is equal to 1 so basically x2 would be equal to 1 minus x1 let me write that for you x1 plus x2 is equal to 1 that's in a 2 component mix and so your x your x1 would be equal to 1 minus x2 so if i want to find the mole ratio of x2 it would be x2 by 1 minus x2 that's basically x2 by x1 mole ratio whereas your x2 is mole fraction so based on this particular equation if you look here you have 1 x1 by 1 minus x1 y by 1 minus y so i'm just going to substitute ls into x1 gs into capital y ls into capital x and gs into y1 which is also capital so this is the equation and this is the equation we get now on grouping all the ls onto one side we would get x1 minus x and g is on one side we would get y1 minus y and this is the equation required now if you look at this it resembles the straight line equation that is y is equal to mx so transfer the gs here and your m value would be ls by gs now finally coming to uh, the straight line equation on plotting this your slope would be ls by gs x1 minus x y1 minus y and that is your single stage unit just going over the whole thing again so that you would find it easier I'm just a student so these are my notes which helped me I hope they help you too and in case you need the next part which is liquid to gas ratio and why it is minimum please do contact